All right, now I'm on page P160 of the GoMath homework. Let's take a look. It says May wants to graph the relationship represented by the table. Which ordered pair is a point on the graph of the relationship? So these directions are the most confusing part about this problem. What they're really asking is take these numbers and write them as an ordered pair. Okay, and you can choose any of them. So I can say, okay, 1, 8 would be written as an ordered pair like this, 1, 8. That's all it wants, okay? And it only wants one of them, but there are four possible correct answers for this problem. You could also do the 2, 16. So any of these, all they want you to do is write it as an ordered pair. Okay, so please, I'm going to ask you, go ahead and finish off and do these last two as well, just so I know that we're clear, okay? All right, number two, an online bookstore charges $2 to ship any book. Cole graphs a relationship that gives the total cost Y in dollars to buy a book and ship the book that costs X dollars. Name an ordered pair that is a point on the graph of the relationship. Ooh, this one again, the directions are tricky. The directions make it tricky. Uh, well, let's make a, an equation first. So we're going to have total cost y, right? That's usually what we're trying to solve in math problems. What is this going to cost me? At least when we solve math in the real world, what is this going to cost me? The, the cost is however many books you buy, which we don't know. You can buy five books, two books, three books. But then on top of that, they're going to add two. Okay, $2 for the shipping. So now that we have our equation, we now can plug in an X value and get a Y. So now all of a sudden we can make one of these tables, okay, that has an X and a Y. And now once you have X and Ys, you have ordered pairs. And it says name an ordered pair that would be on the line. So we can do that now. For example, let's say I plug in one here for X. If I put a 1 in for x, what would I get for my y? Well, 1 plus 2 is 3, so I would get a 3 for my y. If I plug in a 2 for x, 2 plus 2 is 4, okay, and so on. Now, I couldn't use 0 on this problem. Why? Think about it in real life. What is our situation? An online bookstore charges $2 to ship any book. Well, if I choose 0, does that mean I, so if I buy zero books, do I still pay $2 for the shipping? No, so in this particular problem, since it's a real life problem, we can't use zero for X, because if we buy zero books, our cost actually ends up staying zero. <coughs> Excuse me. It doesn't, they don't charge us $2 just for looking at the books, right? But anyways, um, the point of this problem, though, is they want you to name an ordered pair, any ordered pair. So here's an ordered pair, here's an ordered pair, and I could come up with more ordered pairs as well. But remember, you want to write these numbers out using your parentheses and comma between. All right, but if you need help, uh, please raise your hand. Number three, write an expression that is equivalent to 6 times g plus 4. Well, to do that, I'm going to use the uh, distributive property. I'm going to distribute this 6 to both of these numbers. So 6 times g would just be 6g. And then I still have the plus. I haven't done anything to the plus. But then 6 times 4 is 24. So that would be equal to this expression. I just use the distributive property to distribute. That means 6 times both things that are inside. So I did 6 times g, which is 6g, and then 6 times 4, which is 24. Okay, number 4, there are 6 girls in a music class. This represents 3 sevenths of the entire class. Solve this equation to find the number of students in the class. Okay, so we have 3 sevenths. S equals 6 couple different ways you can solve this problem. One, you can get rid of the fraction first, 
and then solve. So if you're one of those people like me who don't like fractions, that's what you'll want to do. Now, if you're okay with fractions, then you can just do an inverse operation. This is 3 sevenths times s, so the inverse operation would be 3 sevenths divided by 3 sevenths, which would just cancel that out so you don't have to do the really hard division. It just cancels it out. So that leaves you with just s on one side. Then on the other side, you would do 6 divided by 3 sevenths, and then you can do your old copy change flip, okay, if you needed to. So that would be one way. So you would have to do the copy change flip, and then you could find your answer. The other way, if you don't like fractions, you could multiply both sides by the denominator first. That would leave you with just that 7 over 1. Cancels that 7 out, so you'd be left with 3s equals 42. And then you would just have to divide both sides by 3 to find out what s equals. Okay, So it takes an, another step, but it, it does get rid of those fractions. So either way, though, either way works. Whatever works best for you. <clears throat> Okay, number five, graph n is greater than negative two on the number line. So I know I'm going to put a circle at negative two. There's no equal sign, so it's gonna be an open circle. And n has to be bigger. So if I want bigger, I need to go to the right. So it's gonna to go to the right and continue on forever. So I'm done with that. Number six. Sam is ordering lunch for people in his office. The table shows the cost of lunch based on the number of people ordering. How much will lunch cost for 35 people? Okay, well you can just follow the pattern. You could find the equation. I'm gonna find the equation. I can think of this as my x and this as my y. So the cost is going to equal, what are they doing to x each time? So I can multiply uh, 8 times 5, and that will give me 40. 8 times 10 will give me 80. So yeah, it looks like they're multiplying by 8. <clears throat> so now I just need to take 35 times 8. Do that math, 35 times 8, and that will give you your cost. All right, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.